to recognize for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, General, I, uh, I've been in the Reserve for Army Reserve about 15 years, and I was wondering if you would speak to uh, the Reserve component and Guard and how important, if at all, joint training is in that context. I know that for me personally, joint is something you learn about when you get deployed to theater. Uh, and I'm sure, I know there have been attempts to, to address that and, and sort of change that, but uh, we all know that there are limited resources, there's limited time for reservists, particularly uh, the Guard, and I wonder if you'd just comment on that and uh, what y'all are doing to address that in, in that context. There's a couple of things that we do. First, first off, uh, the way we do operations today is the Guard and the Reserves play a critical role, uh, whether it be Iraq, Afghanistan, Japan, even some of the standing joint task force we have prepared for uh, response to a, natural, uh, a, a problem inside of the United States. So we now have joint standing task forces that are made up of National Guard and Reserve component. So they are critical to that. They participate in all of the joint staffs and combined staffs that we've established for all the exercise we do. I mean, all the uh, uh, operational uh, missions that we're doing. And they also play a role in all the exercises that we do. We also uh, have in our, tr in our Joint Warfighting Center, we have reservists and National Guard there who help us to train and sustain this, and that will uh, remain. We've also developed both individual and collective training online uh, that will remain as well uh, in the Deputy Director J7 that will have access to the whole force to include uh, our joint force. So, so we have the, the, the pieces there. It's still about uh, getting individuals, leaders, and others to take advantage of this. It's also about making sure we don't forget about the reserve component and guard as we move forward. And I think we've worked very hard at this uh, as, as we have gone forward in many of the operations and training environments that we've established. Are a lot of these um, uh, individuals, guard and reserve folks, are they AGR? Are they, are they, uh, so they full-time AGR? It's a combination of all. T it's TPU and others. It's a co full combination. of Some are, some are full-time, but we also have many AGR and, uh, and, and National Guard, uh, National Guard uh, who come in on a periodic basis. I am less concerned about uh, you plugging people into your structure, because uh, that's going to be a limited percentage of, of the Guard and Reserve Force. What I'm more concerned about is just culturally uh, incorporating the Guard and Reserve into what's going on with the active duty. Uh, I, I know that there are joint exercises occasionally, um, but in my real world experience, and I'm, I'm still in a TPU, I'm in the process of, of, of getting out of it because I have to, uh, but in my experience, um, it, it truly, jointness is, is something that a lot of reservists and guard members on a weekend basis uh, just don't have any, uh, any dealings with. And I, I, I will say challenge. that I have also, we've had some problems with National Guard and reserve component general officers who have not had the opportunity to serve in, in joint assignments. And we're trying to address that now and trying to identify them, recognize mm -hmm. uh, what they're doing and how we can better incorporate them. So I will tell you it's not a full solution that we've developed. It's a challenge. Uh, it's a challenge. Uh, and it's also about making sure that we have the leadership of the National Guard, which they do, and the reserve component of all the services, understanding the importance of ensuring they do get involved in the joint culture because it is something that we all are totally involved with. We, we don't do many large-scale exercises anymore that are not joint. We do very few service-only exercises. And so it's important that we integrate them because the Guard and Reserves are going to be such an important part of our operational capability as we move forward. As we move away from the, the right. strategic concept. That's right. Uh, Admiral, do you have anything to add in my 21 seconds? I have left. Yes. yes, sir. Well, one of our key takeaways is when it comes to employing the Guard and Reserve, uh, we don't want to go back to where we were 10 years ago. And as we're looking to the future, it's how are we going to employ the Guard and Reserve? How can we take those units? How can we train them and employ them, whether they're in exercises, rotational, some rotational capacity? 
And in order to do that, there's got to be training on the front end of that, and that's where we're going to have to focus that, uh, that joint training. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.